Well, what a fascinating conversation with Kellyanne uh, Wolf, um, the uh, executive director of Canadian Unity, the vice president of Freedom Forum Canada, the CEO of Canadian Democratic uh, Defense Association, and a whole bunch of other organizations that uh, um, has really been leading the charge against uh, vaccines, against masks, against lockdowns, et cetera. And uh, I've had the chance, I think twice before, to, uh, to meet Kellyanne um, in the last year and a half and interview her in regards to her points of view. Let me uh, start off by saying, um, I think that Kellyanne is an incredibly interesting, passionate, um, articulate, well-educated, um, knowledgeable individual on her topic. And it's a pleasure to, uh, to listen to her and to hear what she has to say. I disagree with a lot of what she has to say, but I think she has every right to say what she has to say. And I do think that um, for whatever reason, we've ended up uh, in our society in the last uh, in the last year, closing down a lot of uh, people that have had contrary points of view. And I think that's wrong. We have to listen to all sides um, of, of an argument. And I think some of what she has to say is very true. I think the lockdowns um, have been wrong. I, I was one of those people very early on that said I thought that uh, that social distancing rather than physical distancing was completely inappropriate language. And, and, and Kelly's talked about how language is critically important. And, and, and I think one of the reasons why mental health uh, issues happen is because people didn't take, stay socially close. Um, and you can stay socially close through internet, through telephone, through uh, walking in a park and through interaction and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and I think that uh, you know this idea of six feet apart was a right decision, but to call it socially distant was completely inappropriate. I was also a person who got criticized for coming out very strongly and saying municipalities uh, were wrong by closing down parks. And I think that's going to come back as a real mistake, because what we found out is that people needed to interact, they needed to get out, they needed to get fresh air, they needed to get exercise. And by closing down the parks, and, and yes, they correctly said it wasn't the parks they closed down, it was the parking lots, but the vast majority of people needed to go and park at the parking lot to go out and access the park. And so therefore they were effectively closing the parks by closing the parking lots, even though they said, oh, we're not closing the parks, we're just closing the parking lots. But that was a semantic that didn't really, I think, uh, hold water. But I think that's gonna come back to haunt politicians that have closed the parks, because I think that it, it, it showed some of your, you know, we, we paid for the parks and, and, you know, I'm lucky enough to have a big backyard, but there's a lot of people that don't have space. And, you know, a lot of people in 500 square foot or smaller condos that mm -hmm. don't have fresh air and, uh, and they needed to get out and get to those parks. And a lot of those people, frankly, couldn't walk to the park and they needed to drive to the park and park in the parking lot that was closed down. Uh, so I thought that was wrong. These lockdowns. I think these lockdowns have been a mistake. I think that um, they were overdone. I think that we're going to have huge amounts of bankruptcies and uh, and uh, closures and uh, and and companies. And I know a lot of uh, restaurateurs and small businesses that have got half a million million dollars of extra debt that they never dreamt they would have to have. Um, and they're going to be saddled with that for the rest of their life, for the rest of their uh, business uh, career. And uh, I think that's a travesty. And I think that, uh, and again, I use this example and people have disagreed with me on it, but if the government expropriates your property, they have a legal obligation to compensate you at market value for what they expropriated. And, uh, and if they expropriate your business, even for a year, they should have a similar legal obligation to compensate you. And, and if, you know, yeah, you probably heard the statistic. One of the reasons why um, we had to um, fly people out of Alberta and Saskatchewan, no, Alberta and Manitoba, um, uh, was because our ICU capacity on a per capita basis is 40 times less than it is in Texas. And so what that suggests is we've underbuilt our hospitals. We've underbuilt our ICU capacity. So governments didn't plan for the worst, didn't plan for, for uh, catastrophes. And, you know, you think you got to plan for catastrophes. That's one of the things that governments should be doing. You got to plan for the defense of the country. They got to plan for, uh, for uh, fires and floods, and they got to plan for pandemics, even if they happen only once in a while, but it's been every 15 years in Canada. Um, so we didn't plan for that ICU capacity. Because of that, we had to have supposedly this, these lockdowns and, uh, and, and we had to uh, therefore uh, close down businesses. I think that's government's fault and government should therefore uh, have to compensate all of these companies for the fact that they were expropriated out of their business for a year or half a year or whatever that time period was. Um, I disagree with you on masks. I think that uh, you know we've had uh, uh, masks being used very effectively in China and Korea and Japan um, for for you know smoggy days, uh, coal uh, pollution in the atmosphere, et cetera. And so I think that uh, masks are an extremely effective way of of uh, protecting yourself as well as uh, protecting other people. And so I disagree with the uh, masks. Um, I um I disagree with vaccine max mandates because I don't think you can force people to take a vaccine. 
Um, but I do think that vaccine passports are okay. But I think that you can supplement vaccine passports with a rapid test that says that you're uh, that you're uh, not uh, not positive, that you're negative. Um, so I don't agree with everything you said, but I agree with some of the things you said. But I'm, most I'm importantly, agree with that. I'm, more, I'm most agreeing. importantly, I think you have a right to make your voice heard and, and that's to explain to people and uh, and to uh, to um, to be out there in society. And I don't think it's right that you've been arrested. How many times? Oh gosh, I've been put in handcuffs 49 times officially since January 16th, 2021, this year. And I think you should uh, run for the leadership of the PCP because I look forward to interviewing you as the future leader of the PCP next year. On the I'd next rather campaign. participate in a civil oversight committee. That would be a lot of fun. Anyway, that's our show tonight with uh, Kellyanne Wolf, who's uh, who's an activist, um, an anti-vax, anti-mask, anti uh Anti COVID 19. No, I'm more pro choice, a pro choice, pro individual liberty. Okay, well, I like pro choice. Actually, so that's all right. Are you pro choice in other things? Absolutely. Okay, so I like pro choice. That's a good word. Um, and, um, but you're anti lockdown. And I think I'm on that one, I, I, I agree probably wholeheartedly. I think that, um, you know, if people didn't want to go into a crowded office or a crowded elevator, um, that's their choice. And, and frankly, I like working um, some of the time. I don't work uh, all the time, but I, two, three days a week, I work from my home office. Um, and uh, I think that's completely appropriate. But to lock down restaurants and small businesses to and, lock uh, children and to leave schools. grocery stores and some of the big boxes open um, and to lock down. Yeah, I think mental health is probably one of the big unanswered issues. I think that one of the biggest tragedies, unquestionably, in this whole last year and a half is, uh, is, is uh, the management of long-term care. And, uh, and, and we did have an incredible amount of, uh, of mortality within long-term care. And, and abuse, we haven't talked about and that. Abuse. Um, and, I think, other show. and I think the second is going to be the mental health issue on kids that uh, haven't had school, haven't had friends, haven't had interaction, haven't had physical exercise, uh, et cetera. That said, um, what a fascinating conversation. Thanks for joining us. I'm on every Monday through Friday at six o'clock on 960 AM. You can stream me online at www.saga960am.ca. You can get my uh, videos on uh, briancrombie.com, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and my podcast on briancrombie.com, Apple Podcasts, Audible Podcasts, and Speakeasy. But Kellyanne's not going to like it because they're all corporations. You're just going to say, this is terrible. You're making money for corporations. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pro-capitalist. I'm anti-corporatism. Uh, Corporatism. Thanks for joining us. You can tell on The Brian Crombie Show, we listen to everybody. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Good night. Okay.